What's up legends, welcome back to the YouTube channel. I have not uploaded a video in about three months, but that is for good reason. I have just come back from New Zealand where I was hiking for three months straight on Tiaroa. Tiaroa is a 3000 kilometer long through hike that traverses the entire length of New Zealand and it was the most incredible journey of my life. A lot of you guys have been following along my daily vlogs on TikTok and Instagram. Just wanted to say another massive thank you for all the support on those videos, but I am excited to get back into some YouTube content now that I'm home here in Western Australia. I've been getting so many questions from you guys around Tiaroa and my journey across New Zealand. I know a lot of you guys are actually planning to hike Te Aroa yourself, so hopefully I can share some of my insights, some tips and tricks from my journey along the trail as well. Let's get into it. All these questions are from Instagram. I did a bit of a Q&A over there a couple days ago and wanted to go into a bit more depth in this video for some of the more frequently asked questions. All right, question one. Why did you decide to go from south to north from Bluff to Cape Ringa instead of the other way around? And that is a great question. Most hikers, probably 90% of TA hikers, will start at Cape Rienga. They'll start at the top end and they'll head south. And uh, I was one of the very few who headed northbound um, starting at Bluff. The direction you travel is basically just based on when in the year you start. I started really late into the season and so heading north is just the more sensible uh, direction to go. Most TA hikers will start at the end of spring or the beginning of summer. So like uh, October, November and they'll be able to basically hike the whole trail in warm weather where there won't be too much snow. The South Island specifically during winter can get pretty hectic with the weather, especially in some of the Alpine regions. A lot of snow, really cold temperatures, and so the goal is to basically try and avoid hiking during those times. So because I started in February, which is the end of summer, I needed to hike the South Island first before it became too dangerous, too sketchy before the weather became yeah, too cold and crazy. And yeah, I started really late in the season, so I still caught quite a bit of snow and cold conditions throughout the South Island. But as you head north uh, towards the equator, New Zealand's obviously quite a long country. And, you know, into the North Island, it does kind of get warmer and winters aren't so severe. So starting south and heading north as you go into winter is the smart thing to do for sure. Question two. Do you recommend a certain level of outdoor and hiking experience before taking on Tiaroa? Tiaroa is a really hard hike. It's considered one of the hardest through hikes in the entire world and definitely not a trail that you want to just wake up and hike one day without any experience. I'll definitely recommend having quite a bit of experience hiking multiple days, preferably with a heavy pack and on some tough terrain because that is what you'll be experiencing on Tiaroa. I would say you'd also want to be comfortable hiking in adverse weather conditions on really techy track with a lot of vertical gain. You want to have some troubleshooting skills in regards to the outdoors. So if your gear fails or if you get lost, you're going to want to know how to get out of a sticky situation. It's such a long trail. Uh, so much can go wrong. Things will go wrong. You just want to be comfortable out there, especially when there is often no assistance for potentially days. And so you want to kind of be self-sustaining. You want to be comfortable. You want to be fit. You want your body to be able to hold up in the conditions. And uh, that means, yeah, just getting out into some hikes for the big trek and making sure that you're confident and uh, yeah, you're ready for the trail. Question three, any advice for people planning to hike Tiaroa next season? I'm kind of jealous of you guys. Uh, I miss the trail. So if you are planning to hike it next season or if you're watching this video years from now and you're planning to hike it this season, then good luck and have the best time. Definitely a few tips I can share with you guys from my experience on the trail. If you are a beginner or intermediate level hiker, you definitely want to get some training in. That means doing some multi-day hikes, doing some long hikes with a heavy pack, just getting your body used to being on your feet all day, carrying a bit of weight and doing it day after day after day. I'd recommend getting into the gym as well, doing some leg work, getting your muscles and your tendons and your ligaments really strong, really bulletproof because yeah, the trail just gets super techy at times. The conditions can be really tough and if your body can kind of handle anything that the trail throws at it, you're gonna fare a lot better on the trail. Another really important thing to do before you jump on Tao Rawa is to make sure you've tested your gear. You really don't wanna be in the middle of the backcountry and have some of the gear, your gear fail on you or maybe you're not 
know how to use a certain part of your gear. You want to have tested it thoroughly, making making sure it can hold up to some tough conditions. It's of good quality. Obviously, you want to go as lightweight as possible, but you want your gear to last and you want to be confident in your gear because quite often your gear is your lifeline especially when it's cold, when it's wet, and uh, when you're in the middle of nowhere. And yeah, I guess just start researching, planning your trek as early as you can before you start hiking. I only gave myself about a month to plan my trek on Tiaroa, which for me was okay because I really, I kind of thrive in winging, uh, winging my adventures. So I'd plan like a week ahead and I'd change my plans uh, almost every day. But I know that most people probably benefit a lot from having at least a rough plan of the whole trek knowing what transports you're going to use, where your food drops are, maybe where you're going to camp each night. And so getting ahead of the curve and starting to plan and make a spreadsheet uh, or, or a list or however you want to do it as early as possible is going to be super beneficial. Question four, is Tiaroa safe and doable as a solo female? Thoughts on safety in general? It's a great question. And I saw so many solo females out hiking Tiaroa and absolutely crushing it. And from the girls I talked to, uh, I don't recall anyone feeling unsafe at any point. So it's it's definitely doable and you know, hundreds and thousands of females hike Tiaroa every year. So definitely go for it if that's something that you wanna do. Once again though, you're gonna wanna be capable as a hiker, you wanna be comfortable on the trail alone, able to fend for yourself and um, that kind of thing. So don't just go into hiking Tiaroa where you're a, whether you're a guy or a girl alone, unless you're really confident in your own ability. That being said, there are definitely a lot of dangerous sections on Tiaroa, a lot of really exposed alpine sections, a lot of really technical trail where getting your foot Putting wrong can lead to injury and people have died on Tiaroa so it's it's a hectic trail and it's safe for the most part if you're an experienced and a confident hiker just make sure you're getting your experience in make sure you're doing your research and uh, coming to the trail feeling confident and uh, ready for anything all right question five which is probably my most uh, asked question for me which is how much did the trip cost and I didn't really track the cost for my trip and I was lucky enough to have uh, a bunch of sponsors on my trip that provided food and gear and that kind of stuff. So it's hard to give an exact amount, but I did try to give a, a rough estimate of my expenses and it came out to about six or 7,000 New Zealand dollars. And I'm disregarding all my sponsored stuff for that estimate. That is just what I think it cost me altogether if I was to have bought everything along the trek. And that's taken into account accommodation, you know, staying in holiday parks, getting the backcountry hut pass, staying at DOC campgrounds. That's all my food, including eating out at towns. That is the trail donation, which it's not mandatory, but uh, the new, the Tiaroa trail does take donations. And if you hike the trail, I highly recommend donating to it. Also includes like transport, my ferry fees, the canoe and bike hire, postage for food drops and food storage. There's a lot of costs for me. Yeah, I think it was around six or $7,000. You can do it cheaper, you can do it more luxury. I didn't stay in any hotels, I didn't eat out that much, so it definitely could cost a lot more. I think there's a bunch of other YouTube videos online of people kind of breaking down their costs very specifically, which I'll, I'll link a couple of those in the description below. If you guys want me to do something like that in a bit more detail, um, I'm happy to do that as well. Question six, how did you handle having wet shoes and feet for days on end? That's another question that I got a lot. In almost every daily vlog, I was crossing rivers or it was raining and I always had wet feet, which sucked, but I think my feet are just really resilient from a lot of hiking and a lot of long distance hiking. They held up really well despite being wet for sometimes weeks at a time. I think one of the keys for me for good foot health is having a really dialed in shoe and sock combo. I used the Hocker Speedgo 5s and in Gingy toe socks for the entire trek. I didn't get a single blister on the entire TA or any other hike that I've used that combo. And yeah, my feet were fine in the in the wet and the rain. The Hocker Speed Goats dry out really quick. They have great water drainage. And so yeah, getting them wet wasn't really an issue because they would drain out pretty fast. And if the sun was out, they'd dry pretty quick as well. I just made sure to uh, obviously completely dry out my feet at night. Usually that meant not wearing socks into bed and just airing them out as much as possible uh, before putting my wet shoes back on in the morning. And yeah, I didn't really have any foot issues the entire TA. Question seven, what was your favorite stretch of trail and your least favorite? It's so hard to pick uh, my favorite section. There were so many highlights. My favorite section was probably Nelson Lakes National Park. Just an absolutely incredible section. 
incredible views. I had some crazy weather, which just made it even more beautiful and memorable. So I love Nelson Lakes National Park. I also love paddling the Wanganui River. That was just such a unique experience on a through hike and just absolutely beautiful in those remote forests on the river. The Takitimu track was also one of my highlights, which was I think in the first week of, of the trail south of the South Island. Just a really incredible and beautiful remote a uh, bit of backcountry and also the Richmond Rangers was a big highlight for me which is by a lot of people considered the toughest section which I absolutely love just super technical rugged mountains so beautiful I love that bit as well some of my least favorite sections uh, the Tauarua Rangers was by far my least favorite that was just three days of mud and wet and misery I had a bit of an injury in that section as well which definitely dampened my spirits and <laughs> I don't have great memories uh, through the Tauaruas also, for similar reasons, the Longwood Forest, which I think was day three of my trek, just another really muddy and wet and kind of gross section of trail. Both of those sections were really beautiful, but looking back, I, I didn't really enjoy them at all. <laughs> question eight, which uh, kind of leads on from the last question. Could you recommend the best sections of the trail for smaller hiking trips? The good thing about Tiaroa is that it's essentially made up of like hundreds of smaller tracks and they're just all linked together uh, to create this long pathway uh, across New Zealand. And so you can hike almost any section. Some sections that I would highly recommend, uh, number one would be Nelson Lakes National Park, which I just mentioned was my favorite section. Uh, and the good thing about that national park is you don't have to just hike Te Aroa. There's so many different routes you can take through the national park that I've heard are incredibly beautiful and just as good as the main route. And I actually can't wait to head back to New Zealand and explore more of Nelson Lakes. Some other sections that would be great to do over one or two days uh, Tongurua Alpine Crossing on the North Island just an incredible volcanic region that you could definitely do um, over two days the Motatapu Alpine Track was really beautiful north of Queensland you could spend sort of two to five days in that section some great huts some beautiful views and also the Timber Trail on the North Island was a really cool section that you can you can actually ride um, on a mountain bike over one or two days or you could walk it over three or four and it's a super accessible and really beautiful section of uh, the trail. Question nine, are there any dangerous animals in New Zealand like in Australia or the US? Surprisingly, there's really nothing to worry about as far as wildlife is concerned, which really surprised me when going there and I actually didn't know it. Coming from Australia where any hike you're on, you're worrying about snakes specifically, but you know, also spiders and ticks and scorpions and all kinds of critters that can potentially kill you. In New Zealand, it's just the exact opposite. There's no snakes or spiders that you really have to worry about. There's no large predators like you might find in the US or other countries. That took me a long time to get used to. Even on the first week of hiking the trail, I was always looking down in the grass for snakes and stuff and it took me a while to be like, okay, there's actually nothing out here I need to worry about. Question 10, what is your favorite video or photo from your adventure? Yeah, so as I mentioned, I pretty much vlogged the entire trip uh, via Reels and TikToks just short daily videos and uh, yeah, took a lot of video footage obviously over the trek. My favorite videos were probably from my day on Waiu Pass in Nelson Lakes National Park. I hiked during uh, a heavy snowstorm and it was an absolutely wild day. It was, it's quite dangerous actually being out there something that looking back i probably shouldn't have done but it was also the most incredibly beautiful day on trail all the snow just made the alpine region and the alpine lakes that much more beautiful and i got some sick videos there was one video i took in particular as i kind of came off the pass i was hiking with a another tiara through hiker at the time and we just had roughed it over the pass it was cold it was brutal and we made it down off the pass and the snow kind of cleared a little bit and the view was just sensational as we walked into our hut for the night. That would be my favorite video from the whole trek, I'd say. Okay, question 11, and we'll finish off with this one. What is something you learned about yourself during your time in New Zealand? And this is another question that I get asked a lot, and if, if you've ever done a long distance hike, uh, a big through hike, I'm sure you'll agree, you, you learn a lot about yourself. You've got so much time to kind of get introspective and, and think while you're out in the trail, and you're always um, in situations that kind of test you, and so it forces you to grow and really learn new things about yourself. 
For me, I learned a lot about how resilient I truly am. I, I don't think I've really been tested as much as I did on Tiaroa on any other hike I've done. I've done some hard stuff, but Tiaroa was really challenging at times and uh, it really tested me. And I was actually really proud about how I reacted in a lot of really tough situations, how resilient I was and how I kind of just persevered even when I was freezing cold or super sore or lost or whatever it was, kept my cool in almost every situation. That's something that I haven't really been tested in before. So that was, that was really cool to know what I'm kind of capable of and I'm excited to, to explore that further moving forward. I've got some, some bigger and better adventures planned and I'm sure I'll be tested many more times. This trek also really just cemented how much I love hiking alone. Just being out in nature, only being able to rely on yourself, being in the middle of nowhere is really a raw and powerful experience. I am an introvert, so being alone, especially out in nature, comes really naturally to me. But yeah, just it was just such a peaceful experience in New Zealand, kind of just being out in the middle of nowhere. There's no distractions. I'm not relying on anyone. No one's relying on me. And I frothed it. And I'm excited for uh, a lot more solo hikes in the future. As much as I do love hiking with people, hiking Tiaro alone for, for two months was was a pretty special thing. All right, that's it for this little Q&A. If you guys have any more questions, uh, please chuck them in the comments below. I will get back to you. I will reply to those comments. And if I get enough questions, I might do a part two of this Q&A. But I'm also planning to do a bunch more content here on YouTube surrounding Tiaroa, the most epic adventure I've ever done. If you haven't seen uh, my daily vlog series that I did on TikTok and Instagram, make sure to go check that out. There's 61 episodes for 61 days hiking the trail. Yeah, it was super fun to be able to make that and share them with you guys. But yeah, thanks so much for watching this video, guys. Make sure to subscribe uh, to catch all the future content, which there is plenty of coming up. And uh, I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.